We all know that space is the final frontier, but in the universe of Kijemen, in space, there is nothing to fear. Welcome to the first proper episode of World Building Kijemen. I am Sean Fleur, aka Soaring Moon, your host for this series and creator of that fictional universe. This episode will cover a bit about Kijemen's cosmology and natural laws. This episode is sponsored by me. I've written a book about world building titled Paracosmicon. A link to the Amazon page for my book, Paracosmicon is in the description below. It is available in PDF, Mobi, and EPUB formats. In most places, ebooks are sold. Kijemen's natural laws and cosmology are both complicated. Cosmology is the most difficult part to explain and justify, so I'll start there. From the beginning, I made the decision I didn't want a normal cosmological design. All of my world building up to that point had been in a universe like our own, with a modified version of our physical laws. I wanted to be the arbiter of my own world's design, and to create something truly original. The universe has no sun, stars, galaxies, asteroids, planets, or other traditional astronomical bodies. At least not as we know them. There are no planets, but there is Una, an infinite plane of landmass that extends infinitely in all directions. Thus, what theoretical physicists might describe as an infinite plane of Earth-like gravitational field, and by definition, an object with infinite mass, producing a finite and uniform gravitational field. A hypermajority of Una's mass exists below the clouds. Under our universe's natural laws, an object like this is unlikely to exist due to any small variation in gravity resulting in a cascade of gravitational collapse. The small variation attracts matter and causes it to grow larger and larger until it becomes chaotically unstable. In my universe, natural processes and laws keep this force in equilibrium. For some unknown and probably magical hand-wavy reason, it remains stable. So, Kijemen's story occurs on a flat Earth. How does this affect the lives of its people? Like Earth, if you look into the distance, you will see a horizon line. That doesn't change on Una. However, if you look in any direction, you will see more atmospheric and temperature-caused distortion, as well as more mirages. Worse, under absolutely perfect conditions, the best a person can see a landmass through the sky of Una is about 80 kilometers, due to the particulate such as water vapor and its atmosphere. Beyond this, the sky is just a homogeneous shade of blue-gray. Directly above, Una's sky is as blue as they come. Because the intent is for this landmass to be the only place where beings can live, everything else has to go. Planets they can live on, the stars that they orbit, the galaxies and clusters made up of stars. Stars that don't exist can't collapse so there's no black holes. No galaxies exist, no groups of galaxies form, and no super or hyper clusters of galaxies exist either. No universal filaments, and no universal edge. Nothing like that has to be explained, they just aren't there. Life and light have to exist on the plane of Una somehow. A static, cold universe with land masses and no heat isn't going to keep life alive or interesting, so there has to be some sun equivalent. The universe of Kijemen has one, which is called the Source. The Source can't just be a big ball of plasma. If it was, there would be no point in doing all this work just to make Sun the sequel. So I decided to do anything I can to make it weird. The Source is a solid object, hanging far above the plane of Una. It is so large and far away that no matter how far you travel along the plane of Una, It doesn't appear to change its position in the sky due to parallax. We are talking millions of light years away, and hundreds of thousands of light years wide. It covers about 5-10% to of Una's sky. 
unlike our sun's soul, which brings night by moving beyond the horizon of our spherical planet, the source just turns off. On a 29-hour day-night cycle, every 14 and a half hours, the source changes its state between a light and off. In cities across the plain of Una, alarm sirens sound about five minutes before the night begins. Then suddenly, with the standardization of clocks as your only warning and an uncaring absence of sound, night clicks into existence. The next morning, with only some religious building's courteous bells, daylight appears in the same way. Over the day, the orb in the sky lights bright, but dimly, increasing in brightness to a peak, before waning again. The source radiates white light, which is slightly shifted between a series of eight colors, each having magical elemental properties. This happens on a 24-day cycle called the Gradient Sorith, or Grad, which is treated like a month here on Earth. Each Grad is like its own season, due to the elemental properties of the light emitted by the source. The eight 24-day cycles make up a 192-day spectral year. The ages of the people on Una are about twice that of the people on Earth because their years are about half the number of days. Although their days are longer, all days are the same length. The night period is dark and quite long. The dreamers of Una only sleep just longer than we do, about nine hours. They generally have longer periods of free time and rest as a result of the prolonged night. Doing labor at night imposes high risk, especially since labor takes place on airships over open sky most of the time. The chance of injury, falling off of a deck, or plummeting into the clouds below increases if your peers can't see you in danger due to reduced visibility. Now you know a little bit about the cosmology of the Kijemin universe, and especially the source. The next episode of the series will cover some of the geographical and geological features of Una. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next episode of World Building Kijemin.